everyone, welcome to another painting with Jay. As always, I'm Jay, and uh, Rubik is over there whining for some reason. And today we're going to keep painting some Tyranid stuff. It's going to be a lot of fun. And uh, yeah, I'm just going to talk as always, and you paint along, so grab a brush, grab some paints, grab a model, paint along, and let's have some fun. Let's get some work done. Yep. I'm going to continue on with my Tyranids. Today I'm painting up a Toxicrine. Um, he's going to be really cool. Uh, Toxic Cream is going to be a lot of fun to paint up, and uh, I'm excited to paint it up. The model is really cool. It takes up a lot of area, though. It'll be fun for combat, but uh, can't wait to paint them up and have them on the tabletop. So let's get ahead and uh, start painting them up. Hey, everyone. So welcome back to another Paint with Jay. So let's paint up him. Look at him. My Toxic Cream. Cool stuff. Cool looking guy. So, uh, yeah. Today I'm going to talk to you guys about some stuff and some future plans of mine and work and all that jazz and we're gonna talk because you're my confidants, right? You're my uh, my associates that I like to, to share my information with. And today I will do so as I normally do with y'all. So today's Thursday. Uh, what else? I just finished up my painting tutorial. Uh, if you want to see pictures of it, check out my Facebook page. I should probably be hyping it because I've been putting a lot of stuff lately into my Facebook page. I've decided I really should, should um, Use Facebook to its advantage, right? Because obviously it's another form of media that I can just show you guys what I'm up to. So I show work in progress photos, uh, some pictures of this week's tutorial, all that stuff. So it's under J Did Productions. And uh, yeah, it's a cool Facebook page. Go check it out, J Did Productions. And uh, yeah, like the page and you'll see stuff. This week's tutorial was really cool to paint up. Uh, you've probably already seen the work in progress because the work in progress was. Um, in one of my battle reports that I put up this week. Part two is, uh, no, part one's rendering right now. So part two will probably be up tomorrow. So at this point, I guess you might not, but this video probably won't be up till tomorrow. Uh, it'll probably be up on Friday. We'll see. Uh, just knowing my schedule. So, uh, yeah. Uh, what was I saying? Uh, it was a plasma obliterator. It was a lot of fun to paint up. It took me a while. But um, a plasma obliterator it was really cool, and unfortunately, it was very limited edition release. Like it was only in North America available for like hours. It, you know, it was not available for days, um, or most things are you know, definitely available. You know, so. But uh, it was not. I know I paint really sloppily. I apologize. It's my way with my materials, by the way. I'm gonna fix this obviously later with stuff, but yeah. So I'm just gonna paint them up to my usual Tyranid battle report standard. Yeah, it's been a busy week, I know as always. Um, working hard on videos. Um, this the end of the month is coming up, so it's been really good. I'm looking forward to um, to being. I, I, I'm taking some of the funds. I'm taking my funds from my Patreon account. By the way, if you guys really want to go support me, check out my Patreon account as well. Um, I'm checking out so the Patreon account. Uh, I'm taking the funds from it. I'm going to use it to uh, to fix my computer. So this will hopefully fix the issues that have been plaguing me a lot lately. Um, with my computer. So I'm going to take the funds and a little bit of that stuff that I've added up and I'm going to use it to, to hopefully fix my computer. And that way um, I can render a battle report. You know, like when I first got my computer, it took hours, like a couple hours per battle report. It was basically like half speed. And then eventually it became, you know, one sixth speed. And then eventually it became like 28 hours for a battle report. So no more of that. I can't handle that anymore. So I've, I've been breaking up my battle reports into halves because it's the only way I can manage some time, right? Because I, I can't let my computer render for 28 hours on, on end. You know, it's just, you know, crazy. So uh, hopefully it will fix the situation. And that would be good. Yeah. And I'm excited because um, I really just want to get back to making videos hardcore again. 
and it's in heart because as I said, like battle reports are my favorite, uh, not my favorite, they're by far the most popular uh, thing to from my, of all my videos, right? They're by far the most popular. So I gotta make them. And then that, that alone takes up, you know, most of the rendering time on my computer in a week. So I'm having issues. And my other job is keeping me busy, of course, as always, unfortunately. But, uh, yeah, so it's been a busy week. You know what? I had some fun. I filmed a couple battle reports this week. Um, actually, the ones that I filmed are already up. They're the ones that I, I put up this week. So, it was a white sky. Well, it will be up to, like, part one, part one should be up tonight, because it's rendering right now. And part two should probably be up tomorrow. So by the time this video airs, part two will probably already be up. Of uh, Wag Oskal versus um, White Scars. I know it's technically not White... Like, it's White Scars. It's the army of White Scars being pro... Uh, but it's Dark Angel's proxy against White Scars. So. But, uh... It's all good. It was fun. I had a good time playing against Dave. Dave's a good guy. I like playing against him. He brings he has a lot of armies. And he has a lot of Space Marine models, which we can use to proxy other armies if need be. Other factions of Space Marines. So he's uh he's been a lot of battle reports so far. It's been good. Yeah, I also have a quasi it's an unofficial big announcement today. Well I don't think it's that big, but uh, it's not like I'm moving or anything or you know, nothing that important. But it's pretty cool. I think it's gonna be an announcement that uh, well, you know, some people will really like. Um, and it's about commissions. But, uh, yeah, let's talk about commissions. Why not? So the big announcement is I am returning to the world of commission painting. Now, the announcement is not going to be official. I probably won't put up an official announcement until next week. So you guys and girls painting with me, you're my confidants. Of course, the, the irony is if you're painting models right now, you probably aren't going to be hiring me as a commission painter because you're doing work right now. But uh, yeah, I'm returning back to my commission painting roots. Uh, it's been a couple years. Well, I've been doing small commissions over the last couple years as well. You know, it's not like I've been completely not painting or anything. Obviously, you guys have been painting with me for a while. You know how much painting I've done. But I want to return back to commission painting. Um, the reason is I really don't like my other job. I really don't like it. Every time I work, I get just, uh, it sucks. What, you have to do it. You know, in the real world, I understand you have to work sometimes. To, you know what, you can't just, I can't just do videos for my living. It makes sense. But uh, I've realized quickly, you know what, there's been such a demand lately for my, uh, people who keep asking me about commissions and stuff, and um, I miss commissions sometimes. Like, it was really cool painting models I wouldn't normally get to paint, because, um, you know, I only play certain armies, and yeah. So, it'd be cool. So, but I'm gonna tell you, why not? I'm just gonna talk about commission painting. So why did I leave commission painting? People ask me that a lot. Um, the reason was, I was really busy at the time because I was filming for mini wargaming and working my other job, and, and that's the thing that took up a lot of time. Now, obviously right now I, I do the math, I have more free time than I did when I worked for mini wargaming, and I just, I couldn't commit myself fully to painting, and the problem is, I believe that you know, if, if you want to do something right, you got to commit yourself to it, take it professionally and seriously. Um, so I just stopped doing commissions. Plus, I got really behind because um, when I got the offer for Mini Wargaming, I decided to go back, and I had commissions going at that time, and it really slowed me down because I had to then uh, go to work all the time rather than you know painting. And uh, yeah, so another way to fix. The way I'm fixing that is right now I just have more free time. I don't spend, you know, three hours a day commuting to and from any war gaming. And I can spend those three hours painting. My commute now to my, my video job is really close. Practically nothing. So that's pretty cool. Um, I should probably center what I'm doing here. I'm going to take a moment and just clean off my desk quickly while we're talking. So I that that was a huge problem. Another thing that happened that uh, was in my control, but I 
I priced myself out. I really burned myself out because I priced myself stupidly low. I feel I felt guilty, and I still do to an extent, for sure, charging people for my time. You know, I feel weird charging people a certain amount per time, and that's the pro that's the thing with being an artist or a commission painter, which is which is an artist, right? You gotta figure out what your time's worth, and you gotta charge accordingly, and you can't regret it. You can't you know, feel guilty, and that was my biggest problem. So what I started doing was I was charging nothing. Like, my commissions were low. Nothing. Like, nothing. You know, I'd be charged, I'd be paying myself, like, $2, $3 an hour. And so I could not live off my commission work, nor, you know, and, and so I had to get another job, and which led me to my other job, and then uh, I mentioned mini war gaming again, and you know, I just couldn't do it because I wasn't making enough to pay the bills. You know? So, yeah, so I've learned from that, obviously. And since then, I've, I've, been, I've become a bit more confident of a painter. Now, obviously, if I'm doing commission work, I'm not going to, you know, paint it the way I'm doing right now with my models. Um, the the tyrants turn out in the end nicely. I just this is my style with tyrants. I like to I have a dry brushing look on them, and it really cool brings them out. See, um, you guys have seen my work, and I've over the last couple of years I've become a more confident painter, and I've definitely gotten a lot more experience. I've painted a lot, right, and I feel I've only gotten better, especially over the last year since leaving Mini Wargaming. Because when I was working for Mini Wargaming, I was so busy that I couldn't paint a lot. You know, as I said, I spent, you know, nine hours a week commuting. And it was just, undo it was not doable. So I didn't do a lot of painting videos and stuff. And and since coming back to video, to my, my own channel, uh, really heavily, you know, Miniature Painting 101 has really brought, leveled up my skills. And all the tutorials that I painted in the Warp, there's like 50 tutorials now. This isn't a commercial for the Warp, but go check it out, people. Like, it's... It's crazy. Um, there's like 50 videos, 50 painting tutorials now in the warp. Just under. It's in the high 40s now. It'll hit 50 in June. Um, but yeah, you know, like I painted so much that I, I feel better. And uh, so yeah, so, oh, I should probably mention, if you are interested in a commission, because you're the first people to know. If you're interested in a commission, there'll be an email address. Um, in this video, in the description, but it basically will be commissions, right? So C O M M I S S I O N S commissions at jadedproductions.com. I created an, an email address just for commissions. That way I can keep it separate from my other email. And, uh, yeah, I'll give you a quote if you're interested now, but here are the things. Now here's what you must consider. I've, Another thing that really burned me out when doing commissions was giant commission work. Like, people sending me entire armies, and I, it just took forever. So I'm not doing that anymore. I'm only going to do small commissions. And if you want me to paint your army, we'll be doing it a little bit at a time throughout the upcoming months, you know? Uh, right now, I'm already booked for commissions. I mentioned this in one of my work videos, and it was... Uh, I've gotten booked for probably till middle May. It's only a few weeks. But I'm taking on about... Maybe eight to ten commissions a month, but small commissions. And by small, I mean small. Um, like an HQ, like a, a couple things. And by thing, I mean like HQs or a squad of guys. So a couple squads or a couple vehicles, a couple HQs, an HQ and a squad. That kind of thing. Maximum of like two per customer. Because I want to paint um, models, but I don't want there to be a giant waiting time in my commissions. I don't want that. I want a commission that I can work hard, dedicate myself to for a couple days, and and really bang it out. Because then, the person who sends me the models um, will get it back ASAP, right? It's, it's no giant waiting times. And that's good. And even if then, if you're on, a, if you're on the list like of commissions, and you're like 10th on my list, you won't be waiting months. You'll be waiting a couple, a few weeks. You know, most likely a few weeks, and then your your commission's done, and you can quickly see the ladder, you know, being climbed. And I think that'd be the way to do it, and that way it doesn't burn me out as well, because 
I'm not facing this giant wall of models, you know. I'm just uh, doing a, an HQ or a vehicle at a time. And yeah, that's it, right? So what, what will I be doing now? First of all, as I said, smaller commissions. My pricing will be higher. I'm not charging, you know, nothing per model anymore. I got to charge what my time's worth. My time isn't worth that much, to be honest. I know what other painters paint and charge their levels, um, you know, and I am very confident that I will still be on the mid to cheaper scale for the quality that you get. Because I know how much blue table costs, and I know how much like awesome paint job costs, and I know I know what these people charge, and I know my level stacks up to. To their levels and if you've seen my tutorials it's basically that level that, that I paint to for my commissions unless you really want like a low level commission army I can do that as well like dips and stuff it'd be cheaper but uh, I can do that as well I did that for commissions but it was just no so yeah if you want a an HQ or a vehicle or something you want painted up contact me at J Strache at, at commissions at jadedproductions.com. I'll put the email address in the link below. And as I said, it'll be fun. I'm excited to commission work again. And I'm kind of hoping, actually, that commission work combined with Patreon will be a catalyst. I want to see. I want to test the waters again, but I'm pretty sure it'll be a good, nice catalyst to me leaving my other job. And then eventually, um, you know, I can uh, just work on videos eventually. Just, you know. Once I leave my other job and I can commission work um, the hours, I think that will be a, a catalyst to me being able to um, film more videos. The reason being is like I can do painting commissions any day of the week, right? But right now, my other job, I have to work weekends. It's in the rules. I have to be available weekends. I can't book off weekends much frequently, and I have to be available weekends. The only problem is, though, many people that want to film battle reports against me are only available on the weekends. So if I can free up my weekends, I can free up my weekends to film battle reports with other people. And then guess what happened in the end? You guys and girls get more battle reports and people are happy with battle reports. If I can free up more time, I can ensure like that I can put out five videos a week for free and in the warp. So that you will get that, that how to play 40K every week. You know, that would be amazing. I would love to produce a How to Play 40K every week. So, yeah, that's my thing. So I'm doing small commissions. And um, for communication, um, I, I originally used a uh, Excel spreadsheet, or not, Google spreadsheet, or whatever it's called, Google Info Sheet, and on a Google Drive, and I shared it with the clients. And still, clients had a huge problem keeping up with their commission track. So now I've created a Facebook page for Jada Productions. So Jada Painting. Jada Painting's back. The name Jada Painting. So if you want a commissions, you literally all you have to do is go on my Facebook page, Jada Painting, and in it there's an actual post that will be updated frequently. My current lineup of commissions. So you know what number you're at, approximately how long you think you'll uh, think you'll be waiting, and the current status if you are if you're on the table. I call on the table the one I'm working on at the moment. Um, if you're on the table, I will be showing, you know, work in progress pictures or finished model pictures. And you know, then you can see, oh, you know, I'm checking out Jade Productions. I wonder where I'm at. Oh, look, I'm number three. You know, you check back a few days later. Oh, look, I'm number two. You check back a few days later. Oh, I'm on the table. You know, a couple days later, I contact you and say, hey, dude, your models are done. Check out my Facebook page. You know, and then you get back and that's good. So as I said, I think it'll be better. My new method, I think it'll be better for me. It's not the best me necessary method of doing commissions. A lot of people like pref to prefer to do large commissions at a time because then they can just dedicate them themselves to a specific project and all that stuff. I don't really want to do that right now. I want to do small commissions. Plus, if I end up burning myself out, which I don't think will happen, seeing as the amount of models I've painted over the last six... That's also been one of the keys to make me want to go back to commission painting, is to show that I've been able to do it by painting so many models with these Paying with J's. And, um, 
Yeah. You know, so many models. Look how many models I've painted up in the last six months, and I haven't burned out at all. So even if I do burn out, um, I will make myself finish the commissions, and I will only have about, as I said, I want to take on relatively eight to ten at a time, but small commissions. So it, I would only have to bang out, you know, the last, if I, if I do end up burning out, which I don't think I will, I can finish up the last ones and then take a break for a couple weeks and just film insane amounts of videos in those in those weeks and then you know that's my goal if i could just make my life a combination of commission painting and videos um i'd be happy for now you know i'd perpetually just make it videos but commission painting i don't mind at all i love commission painting it was just i did have a couple of really bad clients patrick dubois no i'm kidding i know patrick watches this is why i'm making fun of him. patrick was an, an awesome client you know Shampoo was a great client, but as I charged nothing. These people got, they had to wait because my, that was the thing. They had to wait for my commissions, but oh my goodness, the prices that they paid was nothing, you know, compared to what people charge these days. And as I said, even though I use blue table standards, um, my work typically falls in their high table end, their high tabletop end, and I don't charge anywhere close to what they were. And my prices are going to be higher, as I said, but still, they're going to be good compared to other commission painters. Um, obviously, feel free to still check them out, but I don't, you know, I just want to make minimum wage. And if I can make minimum wage, I'll be happy. Um, I'm, I don't charge necessarily. I guess I charge minimum wage for my commissions about that. I basically charge what I make in my other job in commission form. Sorry, I'm just fixing the lights, the, lamp, the uh, shades here. You know, I don't, I'm not charging an arm and a leg. But, you know, just to put it out there, so you guys, the honesty and the transparency there, like, for my commission, like, my HQ models, like, have you seen my picture, like, my model that I painted up for, for Dave for his Nyal? Like, I would probably charge between 50 and 60 for that, because that is a model that I spent easily five to six hours on. The amount of detail is really good on it. It's, it, it's going to look awesome in his army, and it's definitely a very high tabletop. It's, not, it's a high tabletop, for sure. You know, calling that tabletop standard, it's not it's not competition level. That's why I say high tabletop, right? I wonder if I put it in a competition, how would we do? I don't know. But, uh, yeah. So, that's my level. You know, I, and that's what I'm comfortable charging. And, uh, yeah. Right now, as I said, I mentioned this on, in the warp earlier in the week. And since then, I've already filled, I've gotten... Out of my 10 spots, or 8 to 10 spots, I've already got 4 filled up. So, people, if you want to quote, you know, no, no uh, pressure quote, contact me. And we'll see. I'm still requesting 25% down. Because I like that method. It, it separates the people from testing you out to the people, you know, actually into it. Um, but, uh, it's not much. As I said, I'm... I'm a professional person, I have a professional attitude towards this, and I treat my models, you know, with respect. And I can paint, okay. You know, I'm not the best painter in the world. I'm not. I'm definitely not the worst, but I'm, I'm a pretty good painter. And I want to, you know, I'm hoping that through these commissions that my own expertise will increase. You know, maybe, uh, you know, in most models that I paint, it involves some new technique or some new color scheme or something that I didn't, um, I've never done, and it, it improves my painting skills overall. And uh, I'm hoping that it does this through commissions. So I have a bit more time, and maybe I can quit my other job. Maybe this will be the catalyst. Combined with Patreon, um, the people. By the way, th ever, thank you to everyone who's been supporting my Patreon. It really means a lot. Like, it really does mean a lot. And yeah, most models that I paint will not end up as com as tutorial models. I find. Because people keep asking me about that, if I'm just going to, you know, make them all tutorials. And the answer is probably no. Most of them will not be tutorial models, in fact. Because filming a tutorial is the, like, longest painting times, the way I film. Uh, it more than doubles the time it takes to paint a model. Of course, you get a tutorial out of it. But, um... Most of the time, the extra tutorial money doesn't compensate for the time... As I said, like it, it more than doubles. A five-hour model could become a ten-hour model because you have to wait for every um, every color to dry entirely. Like the way I paint, at least, I do color by color, 
and so I have to wait for the shades to dry and then I take the shade and then I you do the highlights and then I start, start the next color. So it takes a long time versus uh, when I commission paint, my hands are basically always on the model. I don't stop painting the model. You know, if I put on a wash, I then start a new area that, or a new color that's in, in an area that's not touching. Because uh, that way my hands are always on the model and I can guarantee the model gets painted up relatively quickly. You know, even since starting commissions, no joke, right now, so far, since announcing that I'm going to get back in the commission game, I've actually already painted a model for someone. I announced it, as I said, uh, earlier last week, it was late last week, early this week, I had mentioned the warp. And somebody, one of the local warp subscribers, already accepted a commission, like they wanted me to do a commission for them, hired me on, gave me a model, and I've already painted it. And the pictures are up on the Jaded Painting Facebook page, you know? So that's the kind of speed I hope to bring back into the game if I get back in, you know, when I get back in commissions, so. Not, not with everyone, though. I'm not guaranteeing that I can, you know, do that every time because I'm going to have a lineup eventually, and I do have a lineup at the moment. As I said, I'm, I'm currently... Look for the next couple weeks, probably. Next couple weeks. But, uh, oops, missed a spot. And then for the jaded painting, so the paint with jays, I don't know what I'm going to do in the future. Am I going to just focus on my commissions? I could show you my commissions. You know, what I'm working on or something like that. Or I might work on my own models, or I could paint a commission while doing this. I don't know. I'll keep painting. That's what matters. We're talking, we're painting, we're getting work done. You know, and uh, life's good when you get work done. I like this guy. He's cool looking. It's a really cool looking model. Terrible. Like he's gonna be terrible in close combat to, to keep the close combat in, in like for models where they're going to go because look at this like you have to keep all the models in between here because it was giant you know tentacles like it, it's on the board he's gonna be annoying to move through your other guys and stuff but he looks really cool he's just gonna be a bit annoying to uh to work with yeah But it's cool, he's like instant death stuff and poison two up, which most of the time he'd be poison two up anyway, but he could take down maybe a, you know, a wraith, a wraith knight or some wraith guard relatively easy because uh, monster creatures and two up to wound, you know, it's not bad at all. Uh, what else? Oh, tomorrow there's the new Eldar Codex. So I'm going to do a codex review on that probably Friday or Saturday. Um, cur very curious about what's going to happen with them because yeah, Eldar are very powerful right now. So I'm kind of curious to what they do with them. And they came out with new jet bikes, and that's scary because jet bikes are really strong right now. So I'm very I'm curious. What are they going to do? Are they going to get better? Or are they going to get worse? If they get better. It's going to be people are going to be really mad. Because they're already pretty much the best army in the game. So, you know, we'll have to see what they do. I'm curious. So, I'll do definitely do a codex review on that. Um, yeah, expect one tomorrow night. Or tomorrow night or Saturday. Or should I say Friday night or Saturday? There we go. Because tomorrow night is Saturday if this video is tomorrow being filmed on Thursday, but it'll probably be up tomorrow with all the rendering that needs to be done. Um, what else? Yeah, I'm excited. I'm very curious to see how this goes and how many people book me on for commissions. And if it, it's successful, I'm going to seriously just walk, rage, quit my other job and stop whining to y'all and just have a good time. Work hard, paint models, make people happy. 
Yeah. That's what life's about. I just You spend enough time at a job that doesn't make you happy, and you go, why? Why am I doing this? The pay isn't even amazing. It's a job. But you guys know me. I work hard. And I'm not going to stop working hard. I just wish I could get all the videos out in a week. I think that will happen with the commission work. Because then I can paint them, as I said, I can paint on my own schedule. And that will lead to more hours being put forth. Most of my prices, actually, I looked at overall what I'm going to charge for people for my commissions, and I'm not going to change that many of them. Like, I'm still pretty much charging the same thing for a monster creature, same thing for a troop choice, but my HQ standard is going to go up a bit. Tanks are going up slightly. But this is, I'm not going to do, like, uh, increases all the time or anything, but um, I'm just going to see how much it, it, the, my time's worth. We'll see. All right. Next we'll do white, and then uh, we'll do the black, the blues, and then he'll be on his way. This is good. I'm going to paint him pretty boringly. He's just going to be my Tyranid color scheme. That's okay. I like my Tyranid color scheme. And one point is to be able not to, to airbrush him, but I really wanted to get the texture. I airbrushed my Hive Tyrant, and I wasn't the most happy with how it turned out because I like the texture on them. And I'm really happy with how my Diamond Caron took out. Yeah, it turned out. <laughs> what else? Uh, not much is new. You know what? Not much is that. Not much is new. I've been just working hard. Mm, yeah. I want more graphics. I decided that I want to hold. I've decided. I put a list together, which is just making me smile thinking about it. It's one of those armies that just makes me happy. Grot tanks are my favorite model. So I've come out, I made a list where I'm going to try this list one day eventually in battle reports if I can get the models together, but it'll take me a while, obviously. So I want to do an army of Grot tanks. For 1,500 points, it's like 18 Grot tanks. And then for the heavies, I'll either run um, Killicans or eventually Mega Grot tanks. And all Grots, right? And then for the troops choices, all Grots. For the HQ slot, I'll have to run like a war boss or something. Maybe like a war boss grot that I'll convert up, or a gross, uh, a grot mech boy. I was thinking making grot versions of, or Gretchen versions of um, each guy, like a weird boy Gretchen, a yeah, big mech Gretchen, we'll call it big mechin. You know. Oh, what else? Oh, I actually I did have something cool this weekend. Sorry, I went and played. I was able to switch off my my hours for last weekend, and I went and played. Um, see, I forgot what days it is these weeks. But um, I went and played at a, a guy's house. But a guy had a get together of of war gamers in this area. He called it Games Day. I'm pretty sure. Uh, named Ian. He was really a good guy, and um, it was a lot of fun. Like I just got to meet new people in the community, and play some games. I brought my Grey Knights. Um, because they're the easiest to bring. And I won both games. 
but it's not about winning. It's just you know how you play and, and having a great time. And I met new people, and it's good. I think I got some more battle report opponents, um, and it's good. I think it, I I really should integrate myself more into the community, which has just been hard, as I said, because I work another job, and they understand that. They all have other jobs as well, and you know. But uh, there we go. He's done. At least this part is done. Um, they know, and you know, but. Uh, it's been good, really cool to integrate myself into the community. And uh, have a good time meeting people, new people, and playing some games and stuff. I play against two guys that I've never played against. One of them brought Dark Eldar, and one of them brought uh, Summoning Demons. It was a demon spam list, demon, whatever it's called, baby demon, demon baby list, whatever it's called. And it was a uh, Zinch baby demon list, I think it was. And it was pretty fun. He summoned a lot. Yeah. Definitely summoned a lot. It was summoning powers. Holy moly. But, uh, yeah. That was good. And I've signed up for a local tournament. Um, in a few weeks. Called Brawl in the Hall. It's being run by uh, Dave. Dave being uh, the guy who played me in this week's Battle Report. And uh, my partner is is Mike from... Um, you would have seen him in, in my 2v2 Battle Report when we played Orcs. And he's also been in a bunch of mini War Games Battle Reports lately, playing Orcs, usually in doubles with like Cody Rue against Matt. That was probably one of my favorite Battle Reports ever because they just bugged Matt for the entire game. Um, it was hilarious. How much they bugged Matt. But uh, yeah, they had a good time. So he's going to be my partner for um, for Brawl. We're going to have a good time. We're going to play Orcs. Uh, just a lot of fun. Yeah, because he's... No, that's too watery. Uh, he's an Orc player as well. So we're both really looking forward to that. We haven't figured out our list yet. we got to do that. I think it's for Orcs, though. There's always a fine line in orcs because you gotta bring something that you're gonna have a fun time with but that won't intentionally screw up the games because in a tournament they're only two hour rounds and we're playing a doubles 2500 point list between like right uh 1250 points each so hypothetically we could fit a lot of boys into that list and we could just bug the crap out of our opponents but we're not going to do that because it's not as fun when you're at a fun get-together or a tournament and your opponent doesn't get to play most of the game because you spend the entire game, you know, moving your boys. Um, that's just not as fun. And so Green Tide, it can be competitive in some metas, but um, it's not... It can be annoying to most to many opponents, as I said, because then they don't get to play for most of the game. It's just watching a guy move 180 boys, and then so the game ends turn two or turn early turn three, and you're like, oh, good game. Who had first blood? You win, you know. So. May's coming up. I can't believe it's almost May. It was snowing today. I know I live in Canada, people, but uh, it's late April. It doesn't usually snow in my part of Canada in late April, and it's been snowing the last couple of days on and off. Really not. It really destroys your spirit sometimes when you walk outside in April and it's snowing. Yeah. Didn't really accumulate or anything in most areas. But uh, it's annoying when it's cold and windy. And I just want to get my motorcycle and, and go. So yeah, I'll be announcing the commission work probably in a video in the next few days in the free channel. And I'm hoping that the spots fill up. 
and maybe even like uh, maybe if I if I can get into June, like if I can fill up May's dance card and and I can branch into June, I'm probably just gonna to quit my other job and then focus on commissions. And then the list will go by even faster because I'm I'm taking that in consideration when when choosing my commissions. So then, if I can just focus on solely, uh, I could probably get through maybe the first week of May's or June's commissions in May. We'll see. I just may go by, down by the bay, play with clay. I just may. What do you say? And I know that there's another fellow commission. There's so many commission painters out there who are actually probably painting while I'm painting right now with me. Like Greenleaf, I see you there. Greenleaf's always painting with me. Adam. He's a good guy. I had a great time hanging out with him at uh, Adepticon. Greenleaf Terrain, I'm going to start talking about him for a second. He is a good guy. And he's an interest. he's like me, he's an interesting guy too. Adam is one of those those guys that he's always a good guy to have around. He's usually quite positive. He doesn't take life too seriously. He does. Work, he's a professional. Though. He's. A, I will definitely say it, his work is very professional, and the way that he conducts himself about his work is very professional. But he's a really just chilled guy, and he was awesome to hang around with. It was so funny hanging around with him at the same time as Owen. Because Owen can be serious sometimes. And and he was kind of a good counterbalance to Owen. But yeah, he's a good guy. So go check out his stuff too. He makes amazing terrain. And I know Sub Zero, who also listens to this, he's probably going to contact me because he was asking me about commissions at uh, Adepticon. I didn't, I didn't really know if there would be a demand for my work again, but I think there might be because since I've left a lot of people have inquired. In fact, it's a question on my Q and J that I'm going to address probably. I think I'm going to film a Q and J tomorrow. We'll see if I have time. My goal will be to film a Q and J. And then, um, you know, get another one. Last one was about a week and a half ago, two weeks. So every other week, I think would be good. Two a month is a good amount of frequency for Q&Js. Because then enough happens that it actually is quite interesting. I'm pretty boring, I think. Maybe just I'm a boring individual. But, uh, I've got a Toxicreen, and I'm happy. That's my new song called I Got a Toxic Cream and I'm Happy. He's gonna be fun. So this month, it's been a pretty successful month. This month for April, I've painted up a I finished up a flyrant, a dimacaron, a harpy, and a toxic cream. So only four models for my tyranids, but that alone adds up to like a thousand points. So I'm not mini wargamer mat level yet, but uh, get in there. Mm -hmm. I can't wait to try the Damacaron in a battle report as well. That'd be pretty cool. Or Dimacaron, or whatever people say it is. Dimacaron, Dimacaron. I choose you, Dimacaron. Dimacaron. Gotta catch him all. Dimacaron. <laughs> That'd be awesome if it was a combination of Dimacaron and Pokemon. And then it just goes and eats everyone, including Ash. Ash Ketchum, not Ash from Mini Warrior. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it said that I'm only going to a few conventions this year. I really want to go to more. There's a bunch of other conventions, but none of them are anywhere close to here. 
um, that all of my fellow WGC people are going to. I'm like, oh. There's Cool Mini or Not Con uh, coming up. Cool Mini or Not Expo, whatever it's called. That'll be kind of cool. Uh, there's no 40k here, and it's it's mostly Wrath of Kings, right? Because Wrath of Kings is a game made by Cool Mini or Not. Hey, I'll learn it one day. It was really cool what they did at Adepticon. Um, at Adepticon, one of the Austins. Now, have you ever seen my video where I, I it was not really Austin, of course, but I, last year at Adepticon, I interviewed a guy who works for Brush for Hire named Adam. And Adam uh, learned Wrath of Kings. He really liked the Kickstarter and he got a couple armies on the Kickstarter and stuff. So he knew how to play Wrath of Kings. And apparently he entered this tournament in Adepticon. And it was really cool. It was a multiple day tournament. And the winner overall of the tournament uh, won every model. And I repeat, it's every model, so multiple starter sets for each faction, and then every other model that they produced for the game. So every model currently made for the game. It was huge. And, uh, of course, Adam went and played. And the thing is, he figured out really early day one was, he was one of the few people who actually entered the tournament that knew how to play. And he killed everyone. I nicknamed him the Slaughterer afterwards. And he won. The, th the two-day tournament, and he got every model in the game. And his Facebook page has a picture of him. Uh, it's just the models on the table, but it's hilarious. Like, it's every model in the game. Hundreds, and it's like 600 models he won. Total. Maybe I'm exaggerating a little bit, but it's, it's high. That'd be cool. Like, imagine that for 40k. You win every model in the game. That would be amazing. Yeah, I gotta build my army, army of grot tanks. That's what I've decided. Cause it's a it's a it's a list it, that makes me smile, and I really want to build it. It makes me happy. You know, it's a model that I love. I just think they're so cool little things. They're not the most competitive, but that's not my play style, obviously. Um, no, so. What else? Yeah, I've had a great time the last few weeks, and I can't wait. I just, I really, I've decided, I've realized that the key, I think one of the keys to my success as a business will be to integrate myself into the community here, and I'm making my goal to meet people because, hey, it's just good to meet people. Like, I really like to meet the new gamer, the gamers in this area, and become friends with them. It's all good stuff, and there's some really good guys in this area, like really cool guys, you know, at the house while playing 40k. One of the guys was drinking beer out of a cool glass that he, a uh, cup that he made, out of a bull's horn. And I was like, this is probably the manliest thing I've seen while some guys play 40K, I've seen a lot. And it was just so cool. You know, and it's really cool to see that in this area, there's a really cool um, diversity of players that you just wouldn't see in a, I don't know, I just haven't seen in a long time. Like, one of the guys who owns the one of the Harley dealerships in the area, apparently, is a war gamer who wants to meet me wants to meet me. That'd be cool. Because I own motorcycles too, but you know, I don't own a Harley dealership or anything. That's, you know, that's crazy. And it's really cool meeting these people. So, yeah. And, you know, I've gotten to pair up against some good guys like Stu and Dave and Doug who've come by and played me several times. Um, it's just been a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, it's, um, my wife and I played a battle report that went up this week in the warp where we actually tested out Necrons. Now, not even the Decurian detachment, right? Not the Decurian detachment, but um, uh, not even them, just a normal combined arms detachment against Imperial Knights. We saw how they did, which they actually did really well. 
I'm not going to say the end of the game or anything, but they did pretty well. The key is, if you're facing Imperial Knights with Necrons, is you got to flank them. You have to attack them at multiple sides, and a smart Knights player will try to flank you. Because all they have to do is declare their invul on the same side, and then it'll greatly increase the chances of them surviving. But once you can get around them, and then you force them to choose a side for their invulnerable sake, because every turn, at the beginning of the shooting phase, um, the Knights activate their shields, and they can only activate their shield on one side. So if you have half your army on one side of them and half their army on another, the best option is to have a third on every side. You know, front, sides, and back. Because then they're going to choose a third of your, of your army, which will face an invul save, usually a four up, but sometimes a, f a three up, if they're the Seneschal. And... then once you get through that, it's really, if you get lucky, you, have, you know, a bunch of sixes, you take them down. There's no save. And they die. And then they explode. So, that's the key. I really want to go to Britain as well. But I shouldn't think about Britain. I really should. I, I really gotta... My goal over the next few months is to get my life in gear. I feel... That though the last year has been amazing, it has honestly been one of the best years of my life. Getting professionally, I've had some of the most fun in the last 15 months. And some of the greatest times and met some of the coolest, like, so many good people in the last 15 months. I can't complain. But I feel like I really got to step up my life and get my work into gear. And the first step, I think, is probably going to actually be commissions. Getting commissions off the ground. Being successful at that will eventually lead me to leave my other job, or the could be just the support from Patreon, probably a combination too. Uh, one of the, actually the goals on my Patreon account is quit my other job. If I hit a certain goal, but um, leaving my other job and then that will allow me to film as much as I can from home, and that will lead me to success on YouTube, I think, and then. The more successful I am, the, the, what I'm hoping is that the more I will be able to attend these things. Like I, my dream, my dream, is to go to Games Day or whatever it's called now, Warhammer Weekend or whatever it's called in Britain, and meet all of you British people, um, and have a great time with you. And I won't be a sticky wicket, I promise. I got accused of being a sticky wicket by an elderly, per, elderly British person one day. And I would love to do that. That is my dream. And I'm thinking next year, that should be my goal for 2016, is J Games Day, whatever it's called, Warmer Weekend or whatever, 2016, J goes to Britain and does not act like a sticky wicket. I think a sticky wicket is kind of like an equivalent of a wet blanket in Canadian terms, or North American terms, I guess. A sticky wicket... You know, and there's so many good British people I want to meet as well, like Tim, and there's like so many, there's so many British people. Maybe I can go meet Joey Barry, and there's Tim, like Dark on Timatron, and like so many British people I want to meet. So, that should be my goal. So, Jay goes to Britain. Sticky Wicked Edition. And the whole time, I'm just going to go around interviewing people in Britain. Be like, what's a sticky wicket? If they can't explain, I'll be like, what? I'm just going to quickly clean my brush. I've noticed that there's been a buildup near the ferrule. I don't know if you can see that. So I'm just going to take off my glove. For the record, as, as always, I'm just wearing my glove because I just finished up my other tutorial, my other video. And I don't take off my gloves when I'm just randomly painting models, right? So I don't just randomly take off gloves and stuff. But uh, I use my brush cleaner. We're probably going to end soon, because we're 53 minutes in. But look at this. You know, I've gotten a good chunk of work done in an hour. And that's one of the things as well that's really wanting me to get back into commissions is because now I think I've gotten faster and more efficient that the amount of work I can get done in an hour just blows my brain. So I don't necessarily have to charge a huge amount to get the work done in commissions. Yeah, this brush is kind of on its last legs, but it's okay. And eventually Australia. See, I, 
the Americans, I've already been to America three times, but I'm going to keep going. I'm going to Gen Con in Indianapolis. So the Americans I've had a chance to meet, and some of the Canadians I've had a chance to meet. Um, but the British and the Australians I haven't had a chance to meet. And the Germans. But the Germans will probably be at Games Day. British. Because uh, now there's only like one uh, Games Day or something like that. Warhammer Weekend, or whatever it's called. Yeah. Jay cleans his brushes. Yeah, it was cool. It was fun making that video of me filming the plasma, like building a plasma obliterator. It was much bigger than I thought it would be. When I saw the pictures originally, I thought it was going to be like the same size as the other fortifications from uh, from Stronghold Assault that I've seen in battle reports like against me. Like Dave uses a lot. Dave likes to use the fortifications. Um, I didn't think that it would be like that big. On a side note, by the way, grots in that in a plasma obliterator are hilarious. Because you just keep them safe in this building with armor 14 around them. And they just, every turn, just drop a 7-inch pie plate of doom on your opponent. But I have learned grotzukas, man. I am so in love with grotzukas right now. You're going to see why. They do really well in the battle report. Stupidly well. I have Grotzukas on my Grot tanks in the battle report that just went up. That should be up tonight. Part one should be up tonight. Part one tomorrow. Tomorrow being Friday. And uh, yeah, they do really well. Surprisingly well. Look at this. So the model is on its way. It's not done yet. It's probably going to be done before next week and stuff. And then I'll have a. I will have a uh, painted up Toxicrine for battle reports. I don't see them a lot in Matt's battle reports, so maybe he doesn't like them too much. I know he used them a lot when they came out first thing. Yeah, I need to get some more paint. paint. More paint, yo. Did my taxes. And it was actually kind of cool. Because one of the cool things about having a Wargamer video business is that I got to write off pretty much a lot of stuff. All my codices for codex reviews. Now, writing off doesn't mean that much. Like, people think writing off means, like, if I buy a $60 codex, um, I get 60 bucks back if I write it off. No, it really isn't like that. It's just the taxes that I paid on the codex, right? So it's not that crazy. Uh, are applied to taxes and stuff. And I got some money back, not a whole lot. But it was just cool putting like, getting showing my accountant and being like, um, this codex. And he's like, what's a codex? I said, it's a book. He's like, then how does it apply to your business? I said, well, it's a book that I do reviews on. He goes, oh, that's, that's, that's applicable. I said, yep. I'm trying to ex explain wargaming and what I do to my accountant was hilarious. So they're called orcs, and they wah, okay, and they use teeth as currency. Wah? He thought it was kind of cool. He's like, so what kind of company is this? I said, YouTube. He goes, you make YouTube videos? I said, yep. He's like, oh, you're the only one I know who does that. I'm like, oh, cool. And in the end, I don't owe the government large sums of money, and that makes me happy. I'm not getting much back. But, um, yeah, that's pretty good. This guy's turning out pretty cool. See the amount of work I can get done in an hour. You just, I've been chatting with you this entire time. He's not done yet, but he's taking shape. Another coat of blue. Talks and stuff. <laughs> it's really hot in my office right now. I should probably turn down the heater. But it was really cold in it yesterday when I got in because I turned off the heater when it started getting like spring weather, and then it just uh, it started snowing, and I was like, oh no, my office was cold again. So I turned up the heater. Now it's really hot. Mm -hmm. 
That's the story of Jay, people. Professional. Yeah. Jay goes to Britain. Film at 11. One of the things I want to do, um, eventually I want to do, I want to try competitive painting, like the competition painting, but I want to actually take it seriously and do a model up over the next year or so. Um, not like this year where I just put in one of my more proud of models into a competition. I was like, how does it fare? Answer, not well. Um, I'm thinking I might do like a horse heresy guy because I'm not the best at basing and they already have pre-made bases. And they have great detail to them. They're great scale. And uh, I think that they'll be a lot of fun to paint up. Probably, I'm thinking, like, Ferris Manus. He's my favorite of them. Of all the, what the models look like, my favorite so far is Ferris Manus, because he's swinging his, his really cool hammer and stuff. But... Out of all the Primark models. Yeah, we should probably call it here call in a minute because uh, we are getting an hour in and this video is going to be really long to render hence why it's probably going to be out tomorrow on Friday but stay tuned for obviously um, more videos obviously but uh, tomorrow or or it's probably Saturday by the time that they're they're made and when the codex comes out so Saturday will probably be a, an Eldar codex release video series um, I'm going to try my best to get a QJ and j in and uh, we'll see and then next week I will have my goal is for next week to have how to play 40k shooting phase, and then uh, I'm gonna film shooting phase. I'm gonna finish up filming shooting phase, and then I'm gonna film the shooting phase with non-blast weapons and non-templates. And uh, then the next video will be about blast templates and weapon, you know, anything that involves templates, because they are different. And obviously, I should go over you know what uh, each one does. And why? How do flamer templates work? How do um, you know all the blasts? So, yeah. Discuss weapons, you know, weapon profiles, strength, ballistic skill plus dice, seven or above equals a hit. One is always a miss. I'm practicing. This is good. All right, we'll call it here. But look at him. He's actually coming in really good shape. He's got blue and white on him. He is very blue. And over the next week, I'll make him look awesome. Let's end here. Mm, yeah. So as always, thank you very much for painting along with me. It's always awesome to have you here, painting along, getting work done. I really hope you enjoyed it. So, as I said, if you want to uh, quote, you're my, you're my confidants. I'm not announcing this to the public for at least another couple days. But, so if you want a, a quote, contact me at commissions at jadedproductions.com, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And as I said, my prices are going to be more reasonable. They're not going to be dirt cheap. They're not going to be stupidly expensive. You get, you're going to get what you pay for, and I promise you I'm going to work my, put my heart into every model that I paint which is what a commission painter should do. So thank you, for, as always, for watching. Till next time, this is Jay saying happy painting with Jay.